ever puzzled over how network routing functions or how data structures like graphs are navigated? Well, you're not alone. In the realm of computer science, one of the key tools used in these processes is a graph. A graph is a collection of nodes or vertices and the connections between them, known as edges. Graphs are instrumental in representing networks of communication, data organization, computational devices, and the flow of computation itself. Now, when it comes to network routing, the task is to find the most efficient path for data to travel from one point to another. This is where graph traversal comes in, a method used to navigate through a graph in a systematic manner. But how do we ensure that every vertex is visited without creating cycles in the graph? This is where we come across the fascinating world of spanning trees, specifically BFSST and DFSST. To understand this, we will delve into the world of spanning trees, specifically BFSST and DFST. Imagine a connected graph. Now, a spanning tree is a subgraph that connects all the vertices of the original graph forming a tree. It's like a spider web spreading out from a single point, reaching every corner without looping back on itself. Fascinating, isn't it? This concept is a cornerstone in graph theory and is used in various applications from network routing to data structure analysis. One of the intriguing aspects of spanning trees is that a given graph can have more than one. Yes, there can be multiple ways to spread out and connect all the vertices. This opens up a world of possibilities and different paths to explore. The most common ways to generate spanning trees are by using two popular algorithms breadth first search spanning tree or BFSST and depth first search spanning tree or DFSST. Each has its own unique process and results, but both serve the same purpose, to create spanning trees. Stay tuned to learn more about these two fascinating algorithms. BFSST or breadth first search spanning tree starts from a chosen root vertex and explores the graph level by level. This algorithm is like an explorer who begins at a starting point and expands its exploration in all directions, visiting each node only once. It's a systematic method, ensuring that no stone is left unturned. To visualize it, let's imagine the BFSST algorithm as a curious traveler. The traveler starts at the root vertex, which is the equivalent of our home base. From there, the traveler wants to visit all the neighboring places. So we create a queue, a kind of waiting list, and add the root vertex to it. Now, as long as our queue isn't empty, our traveler isn't done exploring. They take a spot from the queue, let's call it a vertex, and visit it. After the visit, they look around and see which neighbors haven't been visited yet. For each of these unvisited neighbors, the traveler adds the path from the current vertex to this neighbor to their travel itinerary, the spanning tree. Then, the traveler adds the neighbor to the queue, promising to visit it later. This process repeats with the traveler visiting a vertex, adding all the unvisited neighbors to the queue and then moving on to the next vertex in the queue. The traveler keeps going until every vertex has been visited or the spanning tree is as large as desired. The beauty of BFSST lies in its simplicity and efficiency. It is designed to make sure that each vertex is visited once and only once, preventing any unnecessary backtracking or revisiting of locations. This makes it incredibly efficient for exploring a graph and finding the shortest path from the root vertex to all others. In other words, BFSST is like a GPS navigation system that guides you to explore every single place in a new city, starting from your hotel and expanding outwards, ensuring that you visit every landmark in the shortest path possible. With BFSST, the edges added to the spanning tree form the shortest paths from the root vertex to all other vertices. So BFSST isn't just about exploration, it's about smart, efficient exploration. DFSST or Depth First Search Spanning Tree also begins from a chosen root vertex but traverses as far as possible along each branch before backtracking. Imagine you're a maze runner and you've just entered a labyrinth. The DFSST approach would be to choose a path and follow it as far as you can. If you reach a dead end, you backtrack to the last junction and select a new path. This is precisely how DFSST works. It explores the graph as deeply as possible before retracting its steps. Now let's dig into the algorithm. The DFSST starts with a stack or recursion to keep track of vertices to visit. The root vertex is pushed onto the stack or called recursively. As long as the stack isn't empty, the process continues. A vertex is popped from the stack. For each unvisited neighbor of the popped vertex, the edge connecting the popped vertex to its neighbor is added to the spanning tree, 
the neighbor is then pushed onto the stack or called recursively. This process is repeated until all vertices are visited or the desired spanning tree size is reached. So what does this mean in simple terms? DFSST dives deep into the graph, following each branch to its fullest before returning. If it finds an unvisited neighbor, it adds the connecting edge to the spanning tree and continues its journey. It only retracts its steps when it has exhausted all possible paths from a vertex. One crucial aspect of DFSST is it doesn't necessarily follow the shortest path. Unlike BFSST which explores the graph level by level, DFSST explores as far as possible along each branch before backtracking. This leads to a different tree structure compared to BFSST. In terms of memory usage, DFST usually requires less memory as it uses a stack or recursion, which has a smaller memory footprint than a queue. DFSST is often used for exploring the structure of the graph and finding cycles. DFSST leads to a different tree structure compared to BFSST, but it also spans all vertices. This makes it an indispensable tool in the world of graph theory, network routing and beyond. So, how do BFSST and DFSST compare? Let's start with the order of visitation. Breadth First Search Spanning Tree, or BFSST, explores vertices in a level-by-level -level manner. This means it visits all the vertices closest to the root first before moving on to the next level. This approach ensures that the edges added to the spanning tree represent the shortest paths from the root vertex to all other vertices. On the other hand, Depth First Search Spanning Tree or DFSST takes a different approach. It explores vertices as far as possible along each branch before backtracking. This results in a different tree structure compared to BFSST, as DFSST can dive deep into one portion of the graph before exploring other parts. Next, let's look at memory usage. BFSST typically requires more memory. This is because it uses a queue to keep track of vertices to visit. As BFSST traverses the graph level by level, it may need to keep many vertices in the queue at once. DFSST, conversely, is generally more memory efficient. It uses a stack or recursion, which has a smaller memory footprint. As DFSST explores the graph along each branch, it only needs to remember the current path, not all vertices at a particular level. Now let's talk about applications. BFSST is particularly useful in finding the shortest path tree in unweighted graphs. It's a go-to solution when the task is to find the quickest route or the least number of hops from one point to another. DFSST, on the other hand, is often used for exploring the structure of the graph and finding cycles. It's the preferred choice when the goal is to uncover the hidden structure of a network or to detect loops and circular paths. In conclusion, both BFSST and DFSST are powerful tools for constructing spanning trees. They have their strengths and are suitable for different applications in network routing, spanning tree protocols, and graph analysis. The choice between BFSST and DFSST depends on factors like memory constraints, the structure of the graph, and the specific needs of the application. In summary, both BFSST and DFSST are powerful tools in the world of graph theory and network routing. They form the backbone of many algorithms that we use in daily life without even realizing. Whether it's sending a message or using a mapping app, these spanning trees are working tirelessly behind the scenes to route your data. Let's take a moment to recap. The Breadth First Search Spanning Tree or BFSST starts from a chosen root vertex and explores the graph level by level. This ensures that each vertex is visited only once, and the edges added to the spanning tree form the shortest paths from the root vertex to all other vertices. BFSST is particularly suitable for finding the shortest path tree in unweighted graphs. On the other hand, the Depth First Search Spanning Tree, or DFSST, also starts from a root vertex, but explores the graph by traversing as far as possible along each branch before backtracking. The edges added to the spanning tree in this case form a tree that spans all vertices. DFSST is often used for exploring the structure of the graph and finding cycles. While both BFSST and DFSST are instrumental in constructing spanning trees, they differ in terms of their order of visitation and memory usage. BFSST explores vertices level by level and typically requires more memory due to its use of a queue. DFSST, however, explores vertices as far down each branch as possible before backtracking and typically requires less memory as it uses a stack or recursion. 
In conclusion, both BFSST and DFSST have their strengths and are used depending on factors such as memory constraints, the structure of the graph, and the specific requirements of the application. It's fascinating to think about how these algorithms power our digital lives, from network routing to graph analysis and beyond. So next time you send a message or use a mapping app, remember the spanning trees working behind the scenes to route your data.